This ain't Rust Drama, dog. This is an update on some things that are going wrong. I assume. I assume there's some some warnings here. If this happens to be about the drama, I'll be sad. But I don't know what it's about. I honestly haven't read it. I don't know. I just assume that it has. There's some malware issues going on. So let's find out. August 24th, 2023. Five minute read. Research babies. All right. Uh, Phylum routinely identifies malware and other supply chain attacks targeting high value critical uh, assets and organize. Let's see. And organization software developers. Most recently, we've reported a flurry of sophisticated attacks targeting JavaScript developers respawning malware on PyPy. Uh, or Pipel, uh, and were first to identify the North Korean state actors or actors publishing malicious packages to NPM. Uh, with our fairly recent addition of Crates IO support, today we're dealing uh, with a thwarted supply chain attack against Rust developers. Okay, okay, yikes, yikes. The uh, staging the campaign. Okay. Ooh, this is kind of exciting. Yeah, it's kind of exciting. I, you know, I, I like to read these things. Uh, in other ecosystems, we routinely see a common pattern prior to the publication of large-scale typo squat campaigns. Interesting. An attack typo squats several popular packages in a given ecosystem. This makes perfect sense. Uh, you see this all the time. It's like my biggest scare is installing. Like I always check dashes versus underscores every time. It freaks me out. This is an ad. Is this an ad? Oh, I hope it's, I, I don't think this is an ad, uh, but this is typo squat. Okay, let's just say you have a crate called, um, you know, called like f uh, foo bar. So you squat foo bar, right? It's just enough for you to think it's something without it being a thing. Uh, just like if you go to like, uh, what's it called? What What is it? OpenAI.com. Is this actual OpenAI? I can never tell because their website looks like it was written with HTMX, but somehow even worse than what HTMX would do. Uh, th for a while, I think OpenAI didn't actually go to OpenAI. It went to some other ah, place, right? It went to somewhere else, and it was totally annoying, and then you'd have to go read like Google. That's the real version. Oh, yeah, I forgot. It just always sucks. Whitehouse.com instead of Whitehouse.gov. Yeah, exactly. So that would be typo squatting. Uh, the attack publishes benign versions of these packages that contain little to no code. It'd probably be even better if you publish the actual code and you mirror the project. That would be like 5,000 IQ, right? I am scared by the light. Sometimes uh, later, typically days or weeks later, the attacker publishes an update with some callback mechanisms for communicating with the attacker. The attacker publishes additional versions containing more overtly malicious payloads. The package publication to Crates.io were no different, though they didn't get as far. On August 14th, 2023, our automated system notified us of a potential typo squad package uh, by the user... AMA perf. Ask me anything perf. Post Greece. Version 1.0. This one. This package was not malicious and contained virtually no code at all. Here's the main RS file. Joke. Mmm. This is it. This is okay. Okay. The initial state of the package poses no threat to any user that installs it. The next day, on August 15th, 2023, the actor published two additional packages in addition to updating the original post Greece package the package uh removed the main dot uh, rs oh please tell me in favor of a lib dot rs okay okay post and if config and rv vrv i don't know what that one is i don't know or xrv rv xrv rv i can't even read it if config i don't know that one either it must be if underscore config right um, following the pattern we out outlined above, uh, several more packages were released on August 16th, 2023. Okay. Uh, in these versions, a build RS was added. Now that is where it gets scary. This is where, yeah, if config would have, would have treat, I still don't know what the problem, I honestly don't even know what the problem is, right? This looks at, but when build RS, when you see build RS, you got to know that that's where it really goes down was added, which includes functionality for communicating host information back to an attacker. On top of BuildRS, we see a Telegram token for a channel ID. Damn. Bot token. Doesn't even hide it. Doesn't even hide it. The package checks out the presence of, uh, of a file mutex located at Envar Outder. If it exists, we exit early. If it doesn't, we recreate it and continue execution. Next, information about the host is retrieved. Request blocking get this thing JSON. Oh my goodness, look at all this stuff. Look at all this stuff. Look at, look, would you look at it? Um, this common pattern we see uh, with credential stealers in other ecosystems. Finally, the message containing this information is dispatched to the previously de defined Telegram channel. Callback, 
platform, message format, query right here, built bot token, channel ID, message, request blocking, get this. Damn. Telegram and Discord are popular channels uh, used by attackers. Uh, what happened to good old IRC? You know, honestly, great call. Why aren't we using IRC for these sophisticated attacks? Or more succinct, succinct, succinctly, uh, in these versions, the attacker added functionality to send information about the tra uh, target back to the Telegram channel they are monitoring. Querying the Telegram channel using a provided token doesn't yield much information, and we are unable to determine if any successful callbacks had occurred. So what? You might be t tempted to ask, does this seem so bad or what? As previously mentioned, this has the hallmarks of early preparations for a broader campaign. Typically, we will see one or two paths taken by the attacker from here. Upon receiving a successful callback from one of their packages, the attacker will publish subsequent versions with additional malicious capabilities, pulling secret or sensitive files. Having proven out their sometimes crude callback infrastructure, the attacker will publish many more packages very quickly in an attempt to cast a wider net before package registry uh, takes down their malware. I mean, this would be very hard to detect. Like, I mean, the thing is, is crates.io, how would you ever detect this? Right? You'd, I mean, the sophistication of that would be so hard. In both cases, the attacker is ramping up for their attack in hopes of successfully compromising developers. The best case scenario is to prevent the attack from continuing in the first place, which is exactly what we did. Reporting to Crates.io, on August 16th, 2023, uh, Phylum uh, Phil made a contact with the Rust Foundation, trademarked, stamped it, copyrighted, uh, to inform them of what appeared to be a staging behavior for, uh, for a malware campaign. They responded promptly and informed us that they agreed these packages looked like clear malware and forwarded a message to the Crates.io team. Well, let's see, a short while later, they confirmed the removal of these packages and informed us that the user's account had been locked out as a result. As one might expect from the Rust community, this exchange was pleasant, and the remediation resulted in a quick removal of the offending packages. <laughs> hmm. uh, what's a Rust dev to do? Well, actually, is he just don't execute build RS by default? Yeah, but you know what's going to happen, right? Like, see, the problem is, is that isn't necessarily like a good answer to the solution, because, okay, let's just say you have that, right? It's, what, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to end up doing what everybody else will do. You'll make a flag that says, just do all build RSs because I don't want to have to specify each one I'm willing to build. And then it will go and do that, right? You're going to have some dash R for build all build RSs. And then that's what you're going to use. And everyone's going to use it. And it's going to become the default behavior. And so it becomes this really awful lack of security security. And so I've never believed that was ever an answer. Um, Phy uh, Phylum has a vested interest in the Rust ecosystem as we're Rust stations at heart. Our infrastructure, our API, our open source CLI, and our open source sandbox are all written in Rust while we enjoy identifying and blocking these software supply, ch supply chain attacks, preventing and mitigating their impact on the Rust ecosystem as a direct benefit to the community and so we're fo uh, that we're very fond of. Okay, that's reasonable. Uh, the as most attacks typically occur during package installation or build, it only makes sense to attempt to determine whether or not a package contains behavior congruent with malware before the package is allowed to execute. Thus, we've developed a cargo extension that transparently queries the Phylum API for information about package before it is allowed to build. This extension ships as part of the open source Phylum CLI and is as simple as this. Phylum cargo build. Nice. Okay. I just think that's a pretty good way to do it. I'm on board with that. I'm on board with something where you can opt into having a third-party service do that. Uh, obviously, could be a little bit tricksy. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I like it. I mean, I like it overall. Uh, in addition to this, long as like long as this thing is open source, I assume it is because they said open source. Yeah, open source CLI. This is good. Long as it's open source and you can see everything a, bar, a, a part of it. To me, that's uh, that's pretty reasonable. In addition uh, to this, we have developed and open sourced a sandbox that limits access to the disk and environment variables. I think they call that Docker. Uh, we've rolled this into our CLI, which is available for the uh, NPM, PIP, and YARN extensions. Uh, this adds another layer of protection to the package installation by building slash installing packages in a locked down environment after they have been verified against our Phylum API. Classic Docker right there. Uh, we are looking uh, to adding the sandbox to other extensions that would be greatly appreciated community feedback. Nice. Okay, is there, someone said there was, this was an advertisement. This looks great. It's hard to say uh, with any degree of certainty whether or not this campaign would have evolved into something more nefarious. We can say this is what we've seen play out many times before in many other ecosystems, and the outcome was always the same. I always felt like this is like exactly the way it's going to happen. 
Uh, you know, no matter how hard you try, no matter how safe your language is, there's still, you know, there's still ways to get around things. And so no matter what, security auditing, all that kind of stuff, it's like the impossible feat that every developer should do, but nobody actually does. And so, you know, I don't mind. I, I really do actually like this idea of having a third-party service because you know what? I fat finger some installations and it installs something and then I end up like trying to use it and realize I have to use something else. And I don't remember if I ever take it out of my cargo uh, you know, my cargo build or my cargo tommel. I don't know if I ever take out all those things. What happened if I just keep, what happened if I'm a victim right now? I'm a victim. Um, anyways, something to think about, uh, with access to SSH keys, production infrastructure and company IP developers are now extremely valuable target. It is prudent that we have a community and re remain skeptical of most packages and libraries we use in the software we write. <laughs> I mean, maybe prudent is correct, but prudent is is impractical. To make this task easier, Phylum will continue to scan every package published to open source looking for so software supply and cha chain attacks, targeting developers and organizations for their work, blocking attacks before they had a chance to get off ground. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, like during, uh, gosh, not so many months ago, remember there was that uh, OSS package that was used by a lot of people that would check to see if you, if your IP is in Russia, and if it was, it would attempt to delete your operating system. I don't know if you saw that, but it's like even packages that are quote-unquote good put in some pretty, they can put in stuff that would be considered a malicious item, right? That would just delete, that would just RMRF you. And so, you know, it's things to think about, which is like, can you really ever stay up to date always? Can you really actually per perfectly protect yourself? We're probably much more vulnerable. It's fucked up. Yeah, it's super fucked up. Uh, but we're probably much more vulnerable than you realize. If it's not an ad, it's sure self-promoting. Yeah, sure, it's self-promoting. It's about a it's about a company. I mean, but think about it. Just take a second here and think about the good they're actually doing, though. You know, never doubt a company. Never doubt a company that will talk about itself when it does good. Okay, it's gonna always happen. But really. The fact that they're doing this, think about how many shitty packages make it onto NPM. Think about how many millions upon millions upon millions of packages are on NPM right now. Right? You know, that's crazy. It's crazy. And so they built a service that scans and does stuff to it and keeps track of it and tries to come up with a way to be able to identify it. I don't care if they self-promote. They're also providing what I would argue a net good. I'm Again, I'm only looking at what they're saying right here. Okay, I'm not looking at anything else. I just assume that this very obviously self-potentially aggrandizing article is purely about all the net wins that they've had. This is still a huge daunting task, and I'm happy someone's doing it. Can we all agree that this if config business, how many people would have got hit by if config? How many people? Right? It would have been wild. It would have been wild, right? So I can appreciate that. I can appreciate that. Clap, -de clap, 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 clap. Not me. Don't do Rust. Not my problem. Uh, me, Satch. I know. So uh, no one. Rust uh, in production doesn't exist. <laughs> Got him. Remember, guys, 80% of security issues can be solved by simply allocating five minutes of your work to do trivial tasks. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. That statistic sounds made up. <laughs> and that's probably fake, but it's probably not a bad idea to do trivial things. Uh, okay, this was great. This was actually a really good article, and I'm actually shocked at like Postgres with two S's, easily typo. If if config, this one seems like the biggest one. I would have definitely been had right there. You know what I mean? Easily been had by that one. Maybe not so much this one. Two S's is kind of hard. You know, I think if you're going to do a, 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 a mistype, you, you don't want to go with double characters, especially at the end. You definitely want to go with something that's like uh, uh, post grease, right? You want to definitely, you want to be a little bit more sophisticated, right? You want it to be a swap of lettering, not necessarily, or, or you know, uh, post grease qu uh, QL, right? You you want to, yeah, or yeah, post grease, yeah, post uh, grease QL would be a good one. Because that seems like something people could easily mess up, right? You want a little bit, you know? You want a little bit. 
You want you want to feel good about it. Po- post geese. Uh, they're running uh, a long con. They introduced fake malware into various packages managers. Two, get people to install them, uh, their wrappers for security. Three, introduce malware into their security wrappers for profit. Ooh, the long con. I never even thought about that. The ultimate con is the... Pe- I mean, it, it, it makes sense. Historically speaking, anyone that promises you peace or safety or security from any position of authority has almost used that promise of peace, safety, and security to oppress people. It's almost classically the number one number one way people come into power is that kind of promise. And so this, I didn't even see it. It's right there in front of me. This whole time, the longest con of all time. Gosh. It's the ones you trust the most. The name is the primogen.